folks, we're starting something new this week. It's called Five Minutes With. It's a uh, short segment, five minutes as you get from the title, uh, which gives us an opportunity to catch up with industry leaders and others in the space uh, on breaking news or maybe not breaking news, but at least current news, as well as maybe a little bit of perspective. First guest for this is Parker Meeks, the CEO of Hyzon Motors. Parker, thanks for joining us. Great to be back, Alan. Good to see you. That's right. You were with us last year on uh, on on the podcast, and we may actually do that again too. We've got a couple of things that going on this week that I wanted to uh, get your perspective on, or a little update. First of all, you had an announcement the other day, uh, getting into the refuse business, which is interesting and a great application for electric vehicles. Period. Uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about what you're up to. So I'll tell you, Alan. We are so excited about the fuel cell ref- refuse truck because to me, it's quite simple. The race for decarbonized refuse vehicles is over. It's it's going to be fuel cell. And the reason is quite simple. We've actually been running our first refuse truck and commercial trial with a company called Ramondas in uh, near Sydney, Australia, for over two, two months now. That truck is performing beautifully. It's actually performing at the same operating cost as a combustion engine re- refuse truck without subsidy today. Um, and additionally, doing all the work that a refuse truck does. In refuse, what's important is not just kilometers or miles. It's bin lifts, right? Refuse trucks are quite challenging because of all the energy that's used in lifting bins and compacting and driving. Um, The weight penalties that come with battery trucks are much more severe in refuse because adding that, you know, two to four tons of battery capacity on the back of a refuse truck can reduce the payload by up to 50%, right? And so what we're seeing in actual commercial operation, unrestricted full day routes, Our refuse truck in Australia is doing all the work that a combustion engine truck needs to do without having to refuel. That's 1,200 bin lifts and roughly 150 to 200 kilometers. And the battery trucks, even the best battery trucks that have been tested for some time now, do about half that work, have to go home and charge. Literally. Okay, so so let's let's go from that and and let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, because electric is beginning to get some traction, you know, battery electric is getting some traction in this space. Obviously, diesel predominates and probably will for some time. Right. But this is uh, this is interesting because, again, I want to take this right into your other issue, which you talked about recently, and that's this whole upfitting question. You right. know, the, the government wants to provide incentives for fuel cell trucks, but they want to provide them to, quote, unquote, manufacturers. Yeah. You're making the case that you are one. We, we, we absolutely think we are. And we think the intent of the 45W, which is the section of the IRA that provides a clean truck subsidy to our customers, is to have trucks like Hyzon's fuel cell trucks to qualify. And unfortunately, the way that the 45W provision was written um, essentially only allows original OEMs to uh, be able to claim the subsidy for their customers. We take a brand new OEM diesel truck. We have that uh, that diesel componentry replaced with, with the fuel cell truck. It's a zero emission clean fuel cell vehicle that meets all the intent, we believe, that um, the 45W intended. So we think it's really important because here's, here's what's most important, Alan. We believe that the IRA wants to stimulate decarbonization, right? And if that's your goal, we believe it, that they want to stimulate it now. And unfortunate, unfortunately for the industry, there's only a couple of us that are actually delivering trucks to customers now. And we are the more nimble. And in our case, we're an upfitter model. So we're just, I made my case to IRS and Treasury that we believe the intent is to put these trucks on the road and to allow customers to benefit from the subsidy. We believe our trucks should meet that. And so uh, we're, we're hopeful that they will see our argument and, and allow upfitters like us to also allow our customers to benefit from that. Provision. When when do you expect to hear on that, Parker? We don't have a timetable, um, but all, all, all that we can do is make ourselves available for follow up. And we, I, I look forward to continuing to engage as much as can help. OK, so the delivery that you made in December to uh, Performance Food Group out in California, are those trucks then basically they're not going to get that incentive, but presumably they got HFIP or something like that, right? Yeah, certainly. And we're, and we're quite excited about the, the the first delivery to Performance Food Group. You know, the, the deployment of those trucks to, to PFG is just shows a great example of a real decarbonization leader in Performance Food Group, the f- fifth largest private fleet in the U.S. with 7,000 trucks with serious decarbonization goals, right? Their goal is to take 20 percent of the diesel per case out of their fleet by 2030. This first deployment is one that's been a long time in the making, right? We ran our trial with them in the L.A. Basin in extreme heat. Back in the summer of 22, I remember because I was there sweating it out uh, as well, watching the uh, truck. And uh, to go to our first our first deployments, you know, first four of the first five trucks under that 50 truck total potential 
uh, is a major milestone for Hyzon and one that we look forward to replicating with other other uh, fleets. The, the the other big milestone coming up for our, our deployments with PFG is that you know second allotment of 15 trucks and and the pending 200 kilowatt truck trial, right? So um, getting our 200 kilowatt truck, which is in uh, advanced testing today and preparing for customer trial soon, you know, into PFG's hands and other fleet's hands to show what it can do and, and to have that truck then commercialized uh, in the first half of this year is another major step for us. Well, Parker, we've got to leave it there because we said five minutes. We actually went five and a half. But hey, that's not bad for first try. Thank you so much for being here. I do appreciate it. Always enjoyed, Alan. Thanks so much. Take care.